You know, I think drop shadows, they're like the singletons of the design world. They're easy to make, but as a result, they can be overused by people who don't know what they're doing. Guilty. And uh, therefore, it's kind of trendy to make fun of them. But when done right, drop shadows can be incredibly useful. They can be a great way to draw your user's attention to the usable elements on the screen, and they can add a nice tactile feel to your app. And as you also probably noticed, they play a significant role in Google's material design guidelines. So for us, applying shadows in the correct manner is important, not just from a design standpoint, but from an engineering standpoint as well. You see, drop shadows can also be expensive. Do them wrong and you can waste precious CPU cycles. But if you do them right, your app can still look nice while keeping that silky smooth frame rate. Let's find out how on this episode of Route 85. So I want to start by thanking Jeremy Goldberg, a UX designer working on the Google app for iOS for providing me with all this great information. Thanks, Jeremy. Now, there are many ways to draw shadows on iOS, each with its own advantages and disadvantages, but today we're going to look at two of them. First up, drawing shadows in a core animation layer. Now, this method is great because it's simple. You just define all your shadow properties in code, which also means that tweaking or messing with them later is simply a matter of adjusting a few numbers. Plus, it's easy to change your shadow dynamically if that's the kind of thing you're into. Here, for instance, you can see that I'm animating the shape of my view and the offset of my shadow all in code, and iOS is drawing the shadow appropriately in real time. Pretty neat, huh? Now, you can access the CA layer of any UI view by accessing its layer property, just like so. Then adding a shadow is simply a matter of adding a shadow radius, offset, color, and an opacity. I'm not going to go into too much detail around these since you can probably figure them out on your own, but I do encourage you to play around with them if for no other reason than it's kind of fun. So all this is great, but drawing a shadow in a CA layer can be slow. And if you have a lot of elements on screen with a lot of shadows, it can really hurt your performance. So what can you do? Well, one tip is to use Bezier paths to define your shadow's shape. You see, iOS is calculating the shape of your view on the fly in order to determine its shadow. This does let you do really cool things, like have your UI image view include an image with transparency. iOS will accurately draw the shadow based on the opaque parts of this image. Pretty neat, huh? But this process does require some work. And if your view is, say, a square, all this calculation is really unnecessary. Yeah, you know, iOS, I could have told you that my view was a square. In fact, I think I will. You see, you can explicitly define your shadow's shape by using a Bezier path. To do this, first create a CG path ref to represent your shadow, and you can do this using any Bezier path drawing code, but probably drawing a, a rectangle is a good start. Then set your path reference as the shadow path property of your CA layer. All your other code can be the same as before. You've just short-circuited the very expensive step of having iOS calculate the shape of your shadow. Incidentally, this also means you can create a shadow that's not the same shape as your view. Why would you ever want to do this? Well. You'd probably never actually want to do this, this is weird, but there are some more practical applications. Uh, for instance, adding a curved shadow underneath a square image gives it that curved paper look without your having to actually warp anything in your view. And you can go with convex here or concave, and they both look kind of nice. If you add an oval shadow underneath your view, you can give it a, hey, my object is standing up in 3D space over a floor kind of look, which is, which is cool. And if you have a complicated shape that would normally use a complicated shadow, like say this postage stamp image, you can give it a simple shadow instead, like this rectangle, and greatly simplify your rendering. Now, another trick you could try, with caution, is to rasterize your layer. Doing so takes a snapshot of your layer, including its shadow, as a bitmap and caches it, which means iOS won't have to recalculate it every frame. It's really easy to do, just set your CA layers should rasterize property to true, or yes, depending. But you need to be careful here. Rasterizing a layer means your device is doing extra work copying your layer to memory. It also means you're using up some of that precious, precious memory. And so if the contents of your layer change on a regular basis, you're going to be doing more work, churning more memory, and this technique could backfire on you spectacularly. And I will say that in practice, I found that Google tends to not use this technique as often as, as the Bezier path one. But if you have a view where the content doesn't change, but the view itself animates, maybe you have items in a UI collection view, or you think a bouncing logo is a good idea for some reason, uh, those might be good candidates for rasterization. Just be sure to use the core animation instrument in Xcode to confirm that it's giving you the performance boost that you are expecting. But if none of these techniques work for you, say you've got a really big view with a really big shadow, well, then it's time to break out the big guns and build your shadow as a graphic asset. See, the theory behind this is that you create an image to represent your view's shadow and nine slice it for easy scaling. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of nine slicing an image, it basically means you would take an image like this one 
and slice it in a tic-tac-toe pattern like this. Now, if you were to resize this image, those corners would stay unchanged. But you can see the side sections, they stretch vertically. These top and bottom sections will stretch horizontally and the center can stretch in both dimensions. And this allows you to resize your image in such a way that nothing looks too stretched out or funky. People often use this technique in creating resizable buttons or dialog boxes, but it can also be used for shadows. Neat, huh? You can see where we're going with this. See, now there are two ways you can create this image. One, create it using a tool like Photoshop, Sketch, whatever, and uh, export it as a file, and then just import it into your Xcode project. The other way is you can create a UI image directly in code. Turns out this is pretty easy to do since CG Context lets you draw with a drop shadow. Either way, you want to end up with a fairly small image that is ready for nine slicing. Now to nine slice an image, you're going to call the UI image resizable image with cap insets. And this basically tells iOS where your slices are for resizing purposes. Oh, and do make sure that you set your resizing mode to stretch. That, that's important. Then you just change the frame of your shadow image and iOS will resize it based on these cap insets to scale everything in a nice nine sliced way. Add this view as a sub view to your content iOS scales it and ta-da, you've got yourself a nice little shadow. Now this technique does have a couple of drawbacks. Uh, one, it really only works on rectangles, rounded rectangles, or other shapes that work well with nine scaling or nine slicing. Uh, it doesn't work so well with stars or irregular shapes. Two, you have now complicated your view hierarchy because you've added a new sub view everywhere to represent your shadow and that can sometimes get a little messy. And uh, three, you've either added more process to your app if you're generating your shadow using a graphics tool or more code to your app if you're drawing your shadow in code, which means there are more places where things can go wrong. But if you have a lot of large views with large shadows and you're smart about reusing this code, it's probably worth the trade-off. At, at least for us, we think it is. If you look at the Google app on iOS and look at either the Google Now cards or our recent pages list, these are all examples of views that have shadows applied using images. So these are just a handful of tricks we use to draw shadows. Do you have your own? Feel free to share them in the comments below and I'll read them. Thanks again for watching. Uh, so did you find this useful? If so, click here to see more videos from Route 85, our show for you iOS developers. And until next time, dear viewers, who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The sh Actually, you know, these days, it's probably the incognito mode guy. <laughs> He's seen some stuff you wouldn't believe. It's a good thing you can't talk, buddy. All right, I'll, I'll see y'all later.